Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm finally going to be getting around to installing the accessory drive on the Camaro. Um, I'm kind of getting over a cold and then the weather's been like really crappy. So it's been a few weeks since my last video. You can see I got everything taken apart. Um, it's all ready for the new stuff to go on. And uh, from there, I'm going to start by installing the blower pulley. I'm going to drill it, pin it, and then uh, we'll go to the water pump and then actually get all the accessories on. So uh, yeah, let's get to work. All right, so as you can see, I got all of the um, LS1 F-Body accessories removed and we're ready to start putting the new stuff on. Now, the first order of business is gonna to be to install the crank pulley. Um, I am gonna to have to drill and pin that. Uh, in order to do that, I went ahead and picked this kit up from eBay and pretty much all this does, it comes with this guide, it comes with some pins, comes with a drill bit. And here's my new pulley over here. Um, it's a factory LSA ZL1 pulley. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead, press this on the car as usual, and then this little piece sits right in here. You put a bolt through there, and then uh, that holds this guide in place, and then you just come in here with the drill bit and uh, drill each side, or you can only drill one. Um, I might do uh, both pins, I gotta see exactly how hard it is to drill through this. Um, but after you drill the hole, it says to go 0.8 inches deep, and then you simply just go ahead and slide the pins through the front. You see in this uh, diagram here, um, they just sit right in there and that gives the crank a keyway and it's gonna ensure that this doesn't spin um, with the extra load of the blower. And you can see they're pretty much the same thing, um, just with the exception of having the extra eight rib drive there for the blower belt. Um, and the other thing to know is that this uh, LSA share the same um, belt drive spacing as like Corvettes and everything. So as you can see here, looking at them like side by side, the LSA pulley actually sits closer to the block. Um, I think it's like about like three quarters of an inch closer. Um, and that's the difference in spacing between the regular F-Body accessories and the Corvette or LSA uh, accessories. So now the way I'm gonna install this, I went ahead and took the old crank bolt. I actually had one laying around from uh, when I did the cam. These are kind of one-time use. You're not supposed to use these over uh, because they are a torque to yield bolt. So pretty much this guy gets torqued to I think like 240 foot-pounds and um, it stretches a little bit and then that's it. If you gotta take it off, you have to replace it again because this thing will come loose. I had to come loose um, on me before. The pulley didn't come off, but I did go ahead and check it um, when I went to do the cam and the thing just came out uh, by hand and I didn't even realize it. It kind of just worked out that I was doing the cam and I caught it, but if I didn't, who knows what would have happened. Uh, so yeah, don't reuse that bolt. Buy a new one, it's like two bucks. Um, get a good torque wrench. You want to torque that thing down, make sure it's not going anywhere. Um, but back to installing this thing. I went to Lowe's, I couldn't find the correct thread pitch uh, bolt there. Everything they had was um, too steep, too coarse. Um, but the factory bolt, I believe it's a 16 millimeter by two. Um, it's a metric bolt. So pretty much what I did, I just went and got the biggest like galvanized bolt I could find. And then I just cut the head off at the threads here. And the same thing with the old crank bolt. And then I just fused them together, I welded them. And now the way this is gonna work, this is just gonna thread into the crank here. I'll get that in there nice and far. And then I'll take the nut off here. The pulley is gonna slip on and then pretty much I'm just gonna tighten this nut um, with these washers and that's gonna press the pulley back on. Once this is all the way down, I could go ahead and install this, um, drill it and pin it. Uh, the other thing I wanna show you, uh, here's the tool I used to remove the old one. Um, a lot of guys I notice online have problems removing this pulley. Either they're using like a three jaw puller um, and it's just slipping, they're trying to grab it from the outside. I got this from Matco Tools a while ago um, and it, it's absolutely perfect for LS motors. If you could see here, um, it's gonna be backwards right now, but it pretty much comes on this way and then it grabs these ears back here. And if I put it on here, like I said, it's gonna be backwards, but you can see how perfectly that fits in there. And then you just put the, uh, the bolt through there. That goes through the hole in the crank. I'm gonna uh, press this thing on, get the drill, and uh, we'll start drilling and uh, put those pins in the crank. Alright, 
so the crank pulley is on. Um, as you can see, I went and I used my little tool here. It worked perfectly. Um, I got it down a good amount of the way, and then I went ahead and just uh, brought it home with the old bolt I had. Now, normally you really don't want to do this. Um, you definitely don't want to just place that thing on there and you know beat on it with a hammer, get this to catch like a turn, and then pull it on. Um, so just go ahead, make a tool, buy a tool, um, at least to get you most of the way. Uh, the thing was, I was having a problem with the adjustable. I couldn't get that much torque on it. So once I was able to get it down far enough, I got this in a good amount of turns, and then I felt comfortable uh, going on there by hand with the ratchet and uh, bringing it all the way home. Um, I also went ahead and used the torch, as you can see, and I just heated it up a little bit, and then literally it slipped on a good amount of the way, um, and I knew it was straight. Then I went and used the tool to press it down a good amount of the way. Um, just be careful when you're heating that up. You don't want to go too far down um, and burn that seal up. So just heat it up a little bit, get it to catch, just so you know it's straight, let it cool, and then start pressing it on uh, because you will go and burn that seal up if you press it on while that is still red hot. Um, but that's all done. Next step is gonna be to install our little um, guy tool here. I don't know how much of this you can see, but that's just gonna uh, sit right in there like that. Um, then I have to drive the bolt through and we'll start drilling. All right, so I got my drill. Uh, the instructions say you wanna drill this 0.8 inches deep. Uh, the pins are 0.750. Uh, so you can see there uh, the hole, you want it to be a little bit deeper than the pin, just so it doesn't stick out against the um, crank bolt. Unfortunately, the drill with the bit is not going to fit. Um, it hits the radiator. Everything's pretty much disconnected though. Uh, all the hoses are off. I just gotta take off the overflow, um, these top bolts, and the radiator will slip right out, and then we can start drilling. Okay, the radiator is out. Um, I got a light down there, so you can see what's going on now. Um, and we're ready to drill. So next step is going to be uh, to put the little spacer guide in. Uh, the kit came with this bolt, so pretty much that just goes in there, uh, tighten it down, and then we're just going to be drilling through these holes here, um, 0.8 inches down, and we'll slip the pins in. Now the instructions said to do this very slow because the bit will dull, so you want to do it at a low speed. I went ahead and I ditched the tape just because that hole in the, the guide there was really, really tight and there wasn't any room for the tape. The bit was kind of binding up. So I put a piece of, um, so I put a mark on there with a Sharpie. I don't know if it's gonna stay or not, but I'm just gonna um, drill a little bit and then take it out and uh, see where the depth is at and do that a few times until I'm all the way through. Alright, so the drilling is finished, uh, the pin is in. I did decide to go ahead and just go with one pin, um, just because it's a really hard angle to get at in the car, uh, and I did, really didn't feel like drilling another hole, but I'm sure I'll be fine with just one. I went in there, hit it with compressed air, some brake cleaner, got all the shavings out, you can see the pin right over there. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and install, now we're going to go ahead and install our new crank bolt. Now, the sequence to this is you want to take your old one. Now, this is the one that I had on there with the, um, the LS1 pulley. You're going to put this in, and with the old bolt, um, the factory spec is you want to tighten this to 250 foot-pounds. Now, what that's going to do is that's going to ensure that the pulley is all the way down, um, fully seated. Once you get that to 250, which is a lot of torque, by the way. Um, auto guys, I'm not sure how I can help you out. It might be easier to do without the trans in the car, or you gotta somehow keep the motor from spinning. Um, if you have a manual like me, just keep the car in gear and have the wheel chocked. As long as your clutch is good, 
Um, that thing's not gonna spin. You'll hit the torque, no problem. Um, I got my torque wrench here. This is set to 250. Um, I'm just gonna torque this down now. Set it to 250. Then once that's done, you're gonna pull the old bolt out and install the new one to 37 foot-pounds, followed by, I believe it's 140 degrees of rotation, and that's like the perfect spec uh, from GM to torque this properly. I don't have a torque angle gauge. Um, this big torque wrench goes to from 50 to 250, so I'm gonna have to go get my small one to get to 37. Um, and from there, I'm just gonna eyeball it um, 140 degrees, uh, but it should be good. So the crank bolt is torqued, um, it's completely finished. Like I said, I didn't have a torque angle gauge. I torqued it 90 degrees and then uh, gave it another 90, but I stopped halfway. So that should be around 140. It's extremely tight. The new bolt is in there. Pulley should not be going anywhere. It's all pinned, ready to go. So the next step is gonna be um, the water pump, then the actual accessories. But I think what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna end this video here. I'm gonna make it, um, a couple of parts just because this took a little longer than I thought um, it'll give me a chance to get another video out for you guys I know it's been a few weeks since I uh, put something out um, and this is good information for anybody who's doing a swap like this and um, wants to pin the crank I'm gonna link the pulley and the pin kit that I used in the description um, but before I end it let me show you what I picked up for the accessory drive so I went with an LSX concepts kit now my initial plan was to pick up their high mount um, Corvette kit and I was gonna use the factory LSA blower drive. But it turned out it was just easier um, just to get everything from them, mostly because I was gonna have a problem running the factory AC um, with this kit. Not because it wasn't gonna be compatible, but the fact if I went ahead and put a Corvette um, because this kit and the LSA uses Corvette spacing so I couldn't use my um, my LS1 AC bracket I had to get a Corvette bracket and that's gonna put the compressor back a little more but the problem with that is the lines are gonna hit the header so that wasn't gonna work regardless I had to move the uh, compressor up top so while I was at it I figured I might as well just go and get their whole kit and that's pretty much what I did the only thing I'm missing here is the blower drive um, I'm gonna order that later once the blower is actually on the car, but I have an LSA water pump. This doesn't come with the kit. Um, I got the power steering pump, the belt. These are all the brackets. This is the AC bracket kit. This is the bracket for the alternator. Um, I got a new alternator over here. We got a brand new compressor. Um, this is a sand in compressor, so it uses the same fittings um, that my current hoses have. So that's gonna fit no problem. But I think I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Um, there's a lot of good information um, for you guys to go and uh, make some progress on your builds. If you're looking to pin the crank, I'll link everything below. Um, I'm gonna get this finished up this weekend. So you can expect the next video to come out relatively soon. It's not gonna be a long like three week uh, wait like this time because I do have to get this done uh, so I can get the car moving out of the driveway. Um, by then it's just gonna be when I get around to editing it. But I hope to have this video out very soon, maybe by tomorrow um, or after uh, a little bit after Memorial Day weekend. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.